Hello, Bethel family, uh, to all those that have joined us tonight and will join us later. Uh, welcome. Uh, glad that we were able to be able to be gathered virtually again tonight. I just plead and urge for you to continue to pray for this situation, to pray for wisdom and uh, guidance and direction as how we move forward. I know next week we'll uh, provide some more insight as to uh, how we will move forward. Just continue to pray. Continue to talk to Creator God uh, through prayer during this time. Praying for the entire world. Again, as I mentioned this morning, uh, this situation has reminded me of several truths. Number one, that the Church is not 701 North 5th Street. It is not uh, the carpet and the floors and the pews, but the church are the saved and baptized individuals that make her up, each and every one of us. And our mission is the same. Our purpose is the same. To share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. We're going to look a little more about Jesus is Lord tonight. I'm really excited about that. Again, thank you for your cooperation. If you knew anything at all, do not hesitate to contact us. Visit our website, www.bethelparis.org, for anything you may need. Another thing, uh, don't forget to share these videos uh, as, much as, as much as you can. Uh, it is the Word of God that is being preached and shared. and. Um, Everyone needs to hear truth from God's Word. They need to hear what God has to say about the world, about themselves, about the future. And tonight's a very comforting message about the Lord's protection and provision for His people. Uh, tonight is, it will, it, we've started at 6 again Wednesday night. Uh, presumably we will uh, do this same thing at, starting at 7 o'clock for the adults and the youth at 8 o'clock. So don't forget to join us there. Uh, again, all those on our prayer request list, we want to continue to ask that you remember Jack and Edna Lee, just lift them up in prayers, please do. Um, it, it, it's, today's even been a rough day, uh, so lift them up in prayer. Uh, Brother Jim Richardson, uh, Guy Davis, Christy Fisher, Lena Fletcher, Ellen Faulkner, Jason Sutliff, Henry Rutherford, the Louise Eckert family, the Garrett Batterton family, and the Angie Rice family. Again, continue to remember them. Continue to remember our church during this time. Uh, again, before, right before I ask Brother uh, Jeremy to come up and lead us in a word of prayer, uh, I want to take this time just for a second. I want to thank, uh, again, everybody. This has been our first Wednesday and Sunday to do this. Everybody that has helped and participated. Uh, our tech guy, Harley Hines, has put in a lot of time. Uh, my wife, uh, Alyssa, uh, getting this set up as well. Jeremy, for all his help, uh, Brother Jeremy Jones. And this everybody, that uh, all our mail route people, just everybody that has attributed uh, to our care. Thank you so much. Again, this is the time maybe to turn off notifications, clear out distractions, get around uh, your device, your TV with your family to hear the Word of God just for a short amount of time. Uh, Brother Jeremy, would you come up? Would you lead our hearts in a word of prayer before we hear a message from God's Word? Glad you could be here. I can't wait. Brother Jeremy. Good evening. Good to be with you again virtually, if you will, all bow together with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you for this day that you've given, that you've blessed us with. We uh, thank you for still being and always being God, um, always being in control. Um, we just thank you for this opportunity to uh, come together uh, in many different ways and many different fashions, but we come together um, to hear your word. Uh, we just thank you so much for your word, uh, for revealing all of these things to us, uh, revealing your heart, your plans for us, revealing your nature to us, uh, and we just thank you for it. We come to you now, though, lifting all these up that were mentioned, uh, even some that are in the hearts of individuals um, listening online. Uh, we, we know uh, that you know all these situations, all these people, um, and that you have a desire and plans for each situation. And we just pray for your will to be done. Uh, we just uh, trust in your wisdom and your will to be done. We just come to you now 
uh, lifting Brother Dylan up, um, that you would just speak through him, um, that you would use him as a, a mouthpiece to speak your word to us, um, to explain, to teach your word to us, and that we all come right now um, in this precious time, putting all things aside, um, waiting to hear from you, uh, waiting to hear your word for us in this time that we need it. Uh, we just uh, trust you. We thank you for being a God who provides always um, and who protects us always. Uh, we just thank you for everything that you are to us, our Father, our God, and our Lord. We ask these things in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. How awesome it is that we serve an omnipresent God. That uh, He is uh, here with us. He is here with me. He is here. He is there with you uh, tonight. How awesome uh, our God is that we don't just have to worship God uh, in a certain place, but we can worship God wherever we are. We can worship God in our hearts. And I pray that we do that tonight. We have been speaking on a subject, on a topic of Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And I've asked the question, do we truly understand what the title Lord and Master means in our life when we say Jesus is Lord? We use that term so often. We call Jesus Lord, but do we understand the implications of that, what that means for our life? And that is what we've been, uh, the series we've been in. We're in our third section of that tonight. Do we call Him Lord, but yet serve everything else? Lord can be defined as one having power and authority over Another master, one having power and authority over another. So if Jesus is Lord, then he has all authority, and that he has all power. There are not many lords. There is one Lord, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And our Lord has even told us in Matthew chapter 6 that no man can serve two masters. We can only serve one. I hope we are serving the Lord. We are in some selected scriptures uh, tonight, some selected scriptures. Uh, I will be uh, announcing several scriptures, reading several scriptures. If you would like to turn with me uh, to certain ones, I can, and I will uh, imply which ones I think would be best to turn to. We will read several scriptures tonight on this topic. Romans chapter 14, you can turn there. Romans chapter 14, verses 8 through 9. I think this is one of the greatest uh, clear, most clear, uh, in fact, passages in all of Scripture about the Lordship of Christ. Uh, this is Romans chapter 14, verses 8 through 9. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be the Lord both of the dead and living. Here's a quote from Dr. Roger D. Wellmore. I contend that if the Christian has settled the lordship issue, then all other issues in his life are also settled. When Jesus is Lord of a person's life, he will fulfill his duties obligations, and responsibilities with joy. We've discussed previously, the last two Sunday nights, because Jesus is Lord, we are His servants. We discussed last Sunday night, because we are His servants, we are to be obedient. He's Lord, we are His servants, and we are to be obedient. Today, we will discuss that because Jesus is Lord, He provides for and protects His servants. Jesus is no ordinary Lord and Master. He is a good and perfect Lord and Master. 
Yes, we are His servants and we owe absolute obedience to our Lord, but He also makes sure His servants are provided for and they are protected. A, an exceptional Lord and Master always makes sure His household, His people are taken care of. He always builds uh, an, a defense around to protect His house, His people. Uh, exceptional Lord Master makes sure His servants are well fed and taken care of in order for them to be strong and able to serve Him effectively. An exceptional Lord Master loves His servants and His servants love Him. They don't serve Him just out of duty. They serve Him out of love. Do you serve the Lord out of love? Jesus is not only an exceptional Lord, though. He's not only a exceptional Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Listen to some of these psalms. Psalm 3410. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Psalm 8110. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Psalm 84, 11 through 12. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Jesus Christ is Lord. He provides for and protects his people. The first thing I want to look at tonight, you can open your Bibles to Psalm chapter 123. Psalm 123. We'll just be looking at the first two verses there. I think it is a, a wonderful verse, especially uh, for this time. Because uh, Jesus is Lord, we should trust and wait upon the Lord's provision. We should not be quick to doubt His provision, quick to run to other things for provision, but to look to Him always for provision and wait for that and trust that He will provide. I'd be quick to run to everything else in our lives. Psalm 123, listen to these beautiful words. It says, Unto thee lift I up mine eyes. O oh, thou that dwellest in the heavens, behold, as the eyes of servants look into the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden into the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. These are this is in the middle of the Psalms of Ascent. These would be sung and recited as uh, Israelites would make their way up to Jerusalem and they would remind them of who God is as they praised Him. I want to point out a few things in these verses about waiting on the Lord's provision and just looking to Him for it. He will provide for us no matter what the situation. It says, unto thee, that's the first off, none other, it's thee, God. It's you, Lord, that I will look. Nothing else unto thee. Lift up my eyes that I take my eyes off of this world. Amen. I take my eyes off the things in front of me, off of what, I, off of what the world tries to offer. I take my eyes off of that level, but then I just don't look up to the mountains. I just don't look up to the sky. I just don't, I just don't look up uh, to nature. No, I, I lift my eyes higher than that. It says unto thee, lift up my eyes, my eyes of my heart. Look to the Lord to provide and nobody else because he is a good and perfect Lord for me. That's where we look during these times. We don't look to anybody else. We look to the Lord. He says, O oh, thou that dwellest in the heavens, God is on his throne. God is in control. He does not just, uh, he does not dwell here and confine, confined here. No, he dwells in the heavens of which he made the heavens and all earth. He is creator God. When we realize that, when we lift up the eyes of our heart to the Lord, to provider, we realize that He is in heaven, that He is omnipresent, that He is almighty Lord God He can take care of anything in our life. 
So we understand who he is. We lift up our eyes to our, our Lord dwells in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants look into the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden into the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he may, until that he have mercy upon us. Two interpretations here. One, I think they both can be preached. Uh, one, that as, ma as servants we look to his hands of uh, commands uh, that he tells us to do. But I think more than that, I think these psalms, uh, this psalm particularly, is implying we wait upon his provision, that we wait upon his care, none other than the Lord. We wait for him. We don't get quick to run to other things as a servant waits for his master. Our eyes look to him to provide for us during difficult times. It's the Lord that we look to. I hope today, I hope during this time, that's what we've done. We just look to Him, waiting on His provision, looking in His Word, coming theologically sound with what we should do in our life. Looking to him and nobody, not looking at others, not looking at what other people are doing or not doing or that what's happening here, what's happening there. No, we look to the Lord and we look for his word for guidance and direction in our life. And that is it. For we are not responsible. We are directly, immediately responsible to the Lord. Next, go to Psalm 23. Why are you in the book of Psalms? Go to Psalm 23. I don't know what better one to talk about the protect, protection and provision than Psalm 23 of our Lord. The Lord is our shepherd and he provides for and protects his sheep. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Just, just listen to these words. I'll read the first six verses and we'll go through it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thy preparedest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This psalm speaks of the Lord as having a close relationship to his people, not distant, but a close and caring relationship. Look at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. You can go to John 10 later and look at the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, because the Lord is my shepherd, number one, I shall not want. I lack nothing. The Lord is my provider, and because of that, He provides everything that I need to live. He provides everything that I need spiritually. I shall not want, I shall not lack. Let me tell you, if the Lord is your shepherd you, and nothing else in your life, you will not lack or want anything. During this time, if you allow the Lord to be your shepherd, to be your leader, who you look to your eyes uh, to, you will not want. You will not lack. You will be filled. Not only that, but he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he says. Now, the first few verses uh, is speaking of us as sheep, 
as he's a shepherd and we are his sheep and he takes care of us. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Let me tell you a little bit about that. Now, uh, if you know anything about uh, Israel in that area, well, there's not just green lush grass everywhere like there is in Arkansas. Uh, it is rather scattered. So you're, you're through a dry and thirsty land a lot of times and you have to be led to certain spots that were well watered and that were green. And that's what the Lord does in our lives. He, he leads us through those hard paths. He leads us through. He knows where the green pastures are. He knows where provision is. And He leads us there. But if we follow anything else in our life besides the Lord, we're not going to be there to the green pastures. We're going to be following mirages all our life. No, you get behind the Lord. You let Him shepherd you. Let Him lead you. He'll provide for you, feed you, nourish you in the green pastures. And not only that, you, that the sheep ate in these green pastures, but they also lied down. They rested because they knew who their Lord was, who their shepherd was. He was going to protect them and care for them there. That's our Lord, and that's what he does for us according to his word. He says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Again, as a sheep, he leads us uh, to provision, to water, but not rushing water. That would be dangerous for sheep to get in and fall in and die. No, he leads them to waters that are clear and good and still to provide for them. He leads us there. We don't have to worry where it will come from. God will lead us. He will provide for us because he is a perfect Lord. He restoreth my soul. When it is downcast, when it is downtrodden, when I don't know where else to turn, when it is, is down, my soul, it is wearisome. It says he restores it. Fulfills it. May our prayer be like that of the psalmist David, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake that we do right, we act right, because he is our Lord and we are responsible to him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Listen to this truth. Oh, this is vibrant, good stuff. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley, though I walk in the low places of the shadow of death, well, let me tell you this, if there's a shadow, there's light somewhere. Amen? If there's a shadow of death, there's some light behind it. Even if in our life we come to that place of physical death, we're in that shadow of death, we know there's light at the end of the tunnel if we know the Lord Jesus Christ. It is but a shadow over us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or the shadow of bad times in my life I will fear nothing I will fear no evil because you are my shepherd because you lead me because you are the light you will provide thy rod and thy staff comfort me well let me tell you something about a shepherd's rod number one it was used to protect the sheep. It, a lot of time, uh, the rod would have nails and, and things in it. it. It would be almost like a club, and it would uh, fight the shepherd. Or this is going to like fight off bears and and uh, lions that would try to get the sheep. It says, "You have the best rod. You're going to protect me from evil. Protect me from enemies because you're riding your staff, which is something you use to uh, get a sheep to come back. But also, you would count the sheep one by one to know they're still there and who have." 99 safe, uh, safe sheep and one wandered would not go get it. Our Lord, he does that, does he not? When we wander, he wants us to come back to the fold. He provides, he cares for every one of us. I want to point out something else here. Yea, though I walk. Now that's, is that significant? You know, a lot of times in our life when we're fearful, when there are panicky times, we want to run. We breathe heavy. We run everywhere. We're not calm. What do we do? But yet it says, though they're walking, though they're in the valley of the shadow of death, there's evil all around. They're walking calmly, knowing that the outcome is on the Lord and He will provide. Isn't that a great truth? Look at that walking through the valley of the shadow with a calmness and assurance that the Lord is at the end of it, one way or the other. One way or the other. They comfort me. 
verse 4. Verse 5, uh, he switches almost to talking of people of sheep as people of people, and Lord is the host. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I love this. One thing you don't do, an enemy is usually hide or you, or you go, there's not really time to sit down and have a picnic. But when the Lord is our shepherd, that's what it says. He says, you can relax. Now, I will prepare a table for you. Sit down, eat, conversate. You're taken care of because I'm your Lord. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to just set you a table and provide for you during this time. You're going to anoint my head with oil customary when you came into a meal. My cup runneth over even during that time. Uh, anoint us with the oil and then our cup, it runs over. We're not lacking in anything. Verse 6, surely, surely, that's, that, that's not maybe, that is absolutely because of this, goodness and mercy shall follow me all, listen, the days of my life. All. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Whew. What a wonderful because the Lord is, because Jesus is Lord, He provides and protects for us. Our Lord hears and answers the prayers of His servants. I'm just going to read Matthew 7, 7 through 11. He answers and hears the prayers of His servants. Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Listen. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Our Lord values his servants. Luke 12, 6 through 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head, listen to that, the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows. We're valuable because he's our Lord. The next thing I do want you to open your Bibles, Matthew 6. This is really needed right now. Because He is our Lord, we should not worry. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 through 34. Because He is our Lord, we should not worry. It is in Matthew 6. that he says in verse 24, he starts this out. No one can serve two masters. For either you will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Do not worry what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor yet for your body. So he says, therefore, because of these things, because of who your master is, take no thought what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? I have, I have loved looking at nature this last week, and as the world is in pandemonium, as people uh, are this and that, and the world is in upheaval, I've looked at the birds in my backyard. I've looked at the animals, and they are going about life regular. They are going about life as they know that they will be provided for. I think we can learn something there. God provides for them, and He'll provide for us as well. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to a stature? I've never been able to uh, grow taller or shorter by thinking about it. Neither can us by worrying, taking things in our in our mind and worrying day in and day out. We can't add anything. We can't change the. We can't change 
We can't, we don't need to worry. Uh, verse 28, and why take ye thought for Ammon? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Do not worry. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We have enough worry today. Let's not worry about tomorrow. You can highlight those in your verse. Read that every day. The Lord protects us from spiritual enemies. Just want to uh, Ephesians chapter six, verse ten through eighteen. You don't have to turn there, but you can mark that Ephesians chapter six, verse ten through eighteen. I'll just read the first verse. It tells us how the Lord protects us from spiritual enemies, the spiritual enemies that lurk, uh, and how He can how He protects us uh, with. Uh, our loins girt about with truth, the, blush, the breastplate of righteousness, the, our feet shed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. But listen to verse 10 in Ephesians 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. He protects us from the spiritual enemies in his might, not our own, but his, because he is the Lord. He protects us because he is the perfect and good Lord. I do want you to turn here to John 10, John 10, 11 through 15. He provides this for us. Most importantly, he provided a way of salvation by laying down his life. John 10, 11 through 15. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine as the Father knoweth me. Even so know I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. He provided a way for redemption and reconciliation. He laid down his life on the cross of Calvary. He took upon your sin and my sin. He took upon the wrath of God. He died on the cross for me and you that we would not have to suffer condemnation. He took our place. He took your place. He took my place because he wanted to protect us from, uh, he wanted to protect us from spiritual death. Though he died on the cross for us, he took our place. He was buried and he rose again having victory over and he offers that victory to you. He offers victory, spiritual victory. If you will in your heart put your faith and trust in him. Because he is a good and perfect Lord. He protects us from spiritual enemies. The last truth I want to look at tonight of the Lord protecting us and providing for us is that the Lord protects our salvation for all eternity. Whoa, that is awesome. Not only did He lay down our life to save us and protects us, He protects that. He, he, he has sealed us for all eternity, never to perish, but have eternal life and he keeps protecting us you know why because we are under the blood of jesus christ we are under his blood of the eternal powerful god his blood saved us and will continue to save us his blood covers us we are saved for all eternity and we can never pluck ourselves out no man can pluck you from my father saying that man includes you <laughs> You're sealed. Listen to this verse, Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. In whom you also trusted, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, after that you heard the word of truth, you heard the gospel, you heard God's word, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, 
You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. It's the down payment. It's the guarantee of our inheritance in, in heaven. The Holy Spirit that has sealed us, that has claimed us to be God's. It's a stamp of approval. You are God's. You are under his care. And it's a down payment and a guarantee that you will continue to be his. For all eternity, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. John 3 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And the last time I checked, everlasting life means everlasting life forever and all eternity. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. John 5, 24. Barely, barely I say unto you, who he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into conflict condemnation, words of scripture, verbatim, you will have everlasting life and will not go into condemnation if you put your faith and trust in the Lord. He protects you for all eternity. In closing tonight, you, everybody on this earth, will recognize and confess Jesus is Lord and Master either now or later. And you don't make Jesus Lord. He already is Lord. It's you recognizing that. It will either be done now or later. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Is Jesus your Lord? It says every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Matthew seven thirteen through 23, just a challenge. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, that is, put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ in their heart. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The truth is, that it's not just the words that you say, but it's the condition of your heart, what it says about who Jesus is in your life. It's not just empty, vain words, but God looks at your heart. I want to appeal to everybody, whether you have professed Jesus, whether you have professed Him as Savior uh, and Lord, whether you have or not, search, examine yourself whether you be in the faith, whether they're empty of vain words, or they're words led by the Holy Spirit of God from your heart. I'll read this last scripture and we'll pray. Romans 10, 9 through 11. That if thou shalt, this is the gospel, do you want to be saved tonight? That if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 12, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich, and all that call upon him. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of of the Lord shall be saved. I hope you have done that. I hope you have called upon the name of the Lord and trusted Him as your Lord and Savior. He is a good and perfect, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He provides for us. He protects us even today. Tomorrow will be no different. Join me in a word of prayer.
Our great God, we thank you for, again, your word, the comfort of it. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that you sent to die on the cross for our sins. God, the provision that you provided for us to be forgiven and uh, be reconciled back to you, God, to be redeemed. Thank you, Lord, for your son and provision through him. Lord, I pray to all that have been under this word, under this preaching tonight, that we'll hear it later. God, if they have not, we'll ask you to save them. We'll accept you as Lord and Savior in their life. We thank you for protecting us, protecting our salvation, protecting us for all eternity. These things we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Have a great week. I'll be in touch, kind of contact next week. No idea what's going to happen, but we will uh, be in contact. I know who's in control, uh, and you do as well. 7 o'clock Wednesday night. See you then. God bless.